Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video in our series on Aruba Cloud Authentication. My name is Scott Lester, and I am an enablement TME in the technical enablement group here at HPE Aruba Networks. During today's video, we'll be discussing wired and wireless setup for the cloud authentication solution utilizing Aruba infrastructure. Let's jump right in and see what we'll be discussing today. On today's agenda, we'll be discussing how to create Aruba user roles utilized for the cloud authentication solution inside our Aruba Central instance. We'll then look at how to create and deploy a cloud auth enabled wireless network. And finally, we'll move into deploying a cloud authentication solution against an Aruba AOS CX switch. Let's jump right into our Aruba user role creation inside of Aruba Central. To get more information around Aruba user roles or anything concerning the Aruba Central solution, such as cloud authentication, simply type in to the search box the search that you would like to look for. In this case, we'll show user roles. For now, we'll jump right into user role creation by selecting the group we'll be configuring under our context menu, known as Enablement Production. We'll move to the Devices tab, and finally click on the Configuration cog in the right-hand corner. Once inside of that context, we'll move to the Security tab. And once that's loaded, we'll scroll down to the Roles selection, expanding out that category. You'll note that we've already created the Cloud Admin and Cloud IoT roles for the demonstration today. To add a new role, simply click the plus sign under the Roles menu and type in the name for the new role. In this case, we'll be utilizing the Cloud-Contractor name. Click OK. Once that's created, to add additional access rules, such as firewall policies for that role, simply click on the role name and the plus sign by access rules for selected roles. For today's demonstration, we'll be utilizing a rule type of VLAN assignment and a VLAN ID of 2001. Once we've entered the VLAN ID, click Save, and then click Save Settings again at the bottom of the screen. To add additional rules for this particular user role or any user role that's created, expand the roles menu again, select the role that you would like to edit, and then utilize the plus or the pencil or trash can beside an existing role to edit those roles. Let's jump in to set up our Aruba Cloud Auth enabled wireless network. Inside of Aruba Central, we'll move back to the Devices tab and the WLAN option. To add a new wireless SSID, click the Add SSID button at the bottom of the screen and enter the name for the SSID. In this case, we'll use the word cloud and keep the default settings. We'll use a client VLAN assignment of static and a VLAN ID of one. This way, if users associate without a valid client role assignment, they'll be black holed into VLAN one and not be able to access the network until an administrator remedies the situation. Once we've done that, we'll click next. In the security context, we'll change the security level to enterprise. We'll keep the key management selection at WPA3 Enterprise CCM128. And under the primary server, we'll select Cloud Auth from the dropdown. Click Next. We'll change the access rules to role based. And then finally, click Next at the bottom of the screen. These are the defaults and all the values set by us to create this SSID. Once that's configured, click Finish. We see that the Cloud Auth enabled Cloud SSID has been configured successfully. At this time, we'll assign our roles that were created utilizing the Client Role Mapping option inside of our Cloud Authentication and Policy configuration. To get to the User Access Policy in order to proceed to the Client Role Mapping selections, we'll move back to our Global Context. We'll click on Security. Authentication and Policy, and Configuration. Under the User Access Policy, we'll expand that. We'll select Edit, and we'll assign our user groups to Client Role Mapping. Again, the user groups are pulled directly from our Azure AD instance, and the client roles are those that we just created inside of Aruba Central. We'll start out with the lowest priority first, so we'll begin with our IoT selection, assigning a client role of Cloud-IoT, and we'll do the same for our contractor option. And finally, for our admin user group. Once those role mappings have been assigned, 
We'll make sure that the WLAN for non-passpoint clients is set to cloud and we'll move to the bottom and select save. At this point, we'll attempt a connection by a wireless device to our cloud authentication solution. Please note that in order to connect to the cloud auth enabled network, we'll need to run the Aruba onboarding client application or utilize the browser with the provided URL under user access policy and user onboarding URL in order to provision the device with the required ETLS certificate necessary for connection to the network. Now that we have provisioned our device, which will cover onboarding in another video in our series, we'll move to list and ensure that we see that device in the successful access request. And here we'd have it. The contractor role has been accepted. The cloud cloud dash contractor ro client role within Aruba central has been applied utilizing the access device named Lightspeed. to get more details about this access request. Simply click on the request. You'll see the username in full. You'll see the access device, device IP, the client role assigned by the cloud authentication solution, as well as authorization details from Microsoft Azure AD in this instance. And finally, request details and the response from the cloud authentication solution. In order to get more information about this particular client, you can always click on the MAC address of the client to drill into client details around this particular device in our Aruba Central instance. Now that we've shown the successful authentication and association of a wireless device to a cloud auth enabled wireless network, let's jump into setting up our cloud auth solution for a wired device. Please note that at this time, support for AOS CX devices utilizing the Aruba Central Cloud Authentication Solution is limited to AOS CX devices running version 1010 or newer on the following platforms, on the 4100, the 6000, and the 8360 Switch Series. Note some important caveats around the AOS CX solution is that adding devices running firmware version 10.09 or lower to a Cloud Auth enabled AOS CX group requires that device to be upgraded first to 1010 or newer, and then the cloud authentication option must be disabled and re-enabled in order for the Aruba cloud auth policy to push to the device. CHAP is disabled for wireless configuration in the Mac auth setup for the central user interface. Only PAP is supported. If you are previously using our Aruba Cloud Authentication Solution for wireless devices, please note that after the Aruba Central upgrade to version 256, users must edit and save the user access policy post central upgrade in order for the policy to push and reprovision all wired devices utilizing the Aruba onboard app version 1.3 or later. Finally, Aruba AOS CX only environment client roles have lower precedence than roles created for wireless devices. It's important that you utilize the same roles for wired cloud authentication as you do for your APs and your IEPs. At this time, let's jump into Aruba Central to begin our configuration. Under the group with the AOS CX switches that we'll be configuring today, move to the devices selection and then to switches. In this instance, we'll click on the cogwheel for AOS CX configuration. To begin configuring, we'll first take a look at the VLANs on the switch. By expanding the VLANs option, note that we have created an admin, a contractor, and an IoT VLAN for our demonstration today. You'll notice that the contractor VLAN utilizes VLAN ID 2000 so that we keep our wireless and wired traffic separate for today's demonstration. Moving out of the VLAN context, we'll take a look at our client roles. We'll need to add the client roles that were selected in the client role mapping to our list for our AOS CX switches. We'll begin with the cloud dash contractor role. Utilizing again a VLAN assignment of VLAN ID 2000. We'll save that client role and quickly create the cloud dash admin and cloud IoT roles. Now that we've created the roles, we'll move out of the context and continue our configuration. We'll move to the authentication servers option under the security menu, clicking on the cloud auth server group the pencil to edit and enabling the cloud authentication option. Click save. And then we'll move out of the server group and to our authentication tab. 
please note that we'll need to change the server group under 802.1x authentication to cloud off, as well as the Mac authentication server group. As noted in the caveats, CHAP is not supported for the cloud off server group, so it will gray the options out and leave PAP selected as the mode of authentication. For today's demonstration, we'll be utilizing port 118 on our AOS CX 6300 switch. We'll simply click the pencil icon. From the authentication dropdown, we'll select 802.1x, accepting all the defaults, then clicking Save. The configuration for all of these parameters, including, licensing, including the certificate needed by the device to connect to the cloud authentication solution, is now being pushed down to our CX switch. At this point, we've successfully configured our wired CX switch for the cloud authentication solution. Let's attempt a connection by a device utilizing our EAP-TLS certificate that we previously installed via the onboarding app and used for our wireless network. The same certificate will be good for wired connections utilizing this cloud authentication solution option as well. Now that we've moved back to our global context and our cloud authentication and policy window, under the list option, we'll attempt a connection. We'll refresh the page. Note that we do have an access request that has been received by Aruba Central's cloud authentication solution and a success. Expanding that access request, again, just like before, we see additional client details such as the access device IP, the client role assigned, as well as authorization request and response information for this particular user. We see that we did connect on a wired connection to the MDF CX6300 switch. Now that we've shown a successful authentication by a wireless and wired device utilizing the cloud authentication solution, let's recap what we accomplished today. Number one, we created Aruba user roles for cloud authentication solution use. We created and deployed a cloud authentication enabled wireless network on the Aruba wireless infrastructure. And finally, we deployed the cloud authentication solution against an AOS CX switch. That concludes today's video on wired and wireless setup for the cloud authentication solution. Please use the email address on the screen for any additional questions. And again, thank you for joining this video on the Aruba cloud authentication solution.